Today we're going to take a look at geodesic tunnels. I quite often get asked um, what are the angles, what are the lengths, how do you design tunnels. Right, uh, what we've got to start with is a polygon. Just choose a number of sides. If you're building a small tunnel you don't need so many sides. If you're building a bigger one you'd need more sides. Um, let's have a look at uh, I've started with six, but that's you know, that's the very basic that you have in the tunnel. But you'd start with this flat polygon. They're all equilateral, so they're all the same length, and they're all the same angle. This is the important thing. So we, what I'll do is you can you can basically choose anything you want. But we've got to we've got to sort of set up in a in a certain way. Let's have a look at this one. This thirteen one, for example, is uh, if it's a tunnel, you could draw your base across here. And that will give you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different sections. Um, but you've got a flat top, so you might want to avoid that. So you can you can either turn that round, for example, if you did this upside down and you flipped it over, you get one, two, three, four, five, six sides, and that would give you a point at the top. Uh, in this tutorial, we'll take an example one. This is a fourteen-sided one because it's sort of a mid-size you can build a mid-size tunnel with this and we'll uh, we can put our ground level there that gives us one two three four five six seven eight different segments but it's got straight side walls it's got the point at the top so we'll use that in this example before we go on to the example i'll just show you this one uh, you can quite easily do a tunnel like that where it bulges out if you need to. So there's nothing to um, say you have to do any particular thing. Here's another one. This is the 16 sided polygon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight sides, the same as the last one, but this the sides are slanting in from the ground up. So I think I prefer the this one here. So we'll work with this one to build a tunnel and then you can probably extrapolate from that any size you want. Um, what I could do is do some sort of um, cheat sheet PDF. Uh, let me know if you're interested in that in the, in the comments. When we've decided our polygon, what we'll do is we choose the ground level. Chop it off so we've got a flat a flat. Now you can at this stage put your, uh, put a little per, um, scale size person in to see what head heights are, are like. And that's how I start. But what we know is that we have on this one we have straight side walls. All of these angles are the same because it's a regular polygon. And that's a right angle at the bottom. So that's keeping everything simple for us. Then from this point we extrude the shape along. So now we have a... Um, paper tunnel but we've got to split it down into triangles um, and there are two different ways to do that uh, what I've done is I've got some measurements on this I'm using an equilateral triangle and uh, there's no reason why you can't use isosceles uh, it wouldn't be an issue but this keeps all of the edge lengths the same so we've got edge lengths of 300 but it's also important to know what we, what this length is here and I'll show you why. Right, as we as we break down uh, this long rectangle into triangles, you can see that the this edge is the length from the middle of the triangle to the point. So that's why we need that measurement. So when you when you build your tunnel, you can measure that. Uh, measure your height, have your scale guy in it, but you know that this measurement represents the measurement from the middle of the base to the point. Okay, once we've done that, we can just, we know that these end ones are half triangles, so all we do is we um, top and tail the triangles all the way along the structure, and this is the first way and most simplest to do it. All of the joints are all exactly the same, and this dihedral angle is always the same. On this one, we've got 154.3 degree that's a dihedral you can work out what your bevel angle is from that uh, the only things to consider on this design are 
you need half triangles at the end or you can do what I did with the um, canary wharf tunnel which was to just to use the triangles here make that the end of your so you have a, a like a point that sticks out on your um, structure and the only thing to bear other thing to bear in mind is that you have to move along at whatever this is I think I've got this at 300 from here to here so you can only make tunnels in increments of 300 now if uh, it they don't have to be equilateral triangles let me demonstrate we'll do this and if I shrink this in now the isosceles triangles with long sides and a short bottom uh, so the and the the bevel angle is the same so you, as long as your two edges and that's a right angle as long as your two edges are the same and your bottom is uh, can be whatever whatever you need to be now there is another way you can build a tunnel which is slightly more complicated if you notice on this one the bases of the triangles are running horizontally well we can do the opposite to that which is the bases of the triangle run vertically so so instead of the center of the this edge here being the center of a triangle it's the bottom and then we rotate this face because the next set of triangles are twisted I'm going to show you that now uh, yeah we'll do it on here this triangle here is rotated round to form this triangle here and these tunnels if you notice have a dihedral angle here negative and a dihedral angle here positive uh, and again you do the same thing with these I use this design on the bottom of a two frequency dome and and the dome goes on here and is half that way around um, now this is slightly stiffer you can actually make this one with paper just crease the equilateral triangles on the paper and then bend the paper over and you'll find that it naturally folds into this um, uh, any outy type structure so that's a bit stiffer but it's a bit more complicated to make because you have uh, this diagonal here and you also have this one here to make this one longer the these run over at a higher rate but obviously you're covering more area with the same number of triangles so it's, it's worth a look at but this angle's changed and I do believe I'm not sure about this one it might be the same but I think that might have changed as well so the dihedral's changed so you have to you have to decide on something uh, first and then and then stretch it if you if you need to and then do your dihedral from there whereas uh, this one here the you can stretch it and only the edge length changes the dihedral stay the same uh, this this one's not as structurally sound because again take a piece of paper for this the structure is only in the bends so bend one two three four five six seven eight bend a sheet of paper into eight long lengths and then form your tunnel and see how that compares structurally to this one here and you'll probably notice that this one's a bit stiffer and uh, nothing to say that this won't work it's just that you have to bear in mind sometimes you need to brace from here to here so from there that's about uh, all that's the the basics of how we um, design a tunnel from scratch you can do any polygon uh, with any number of sides to make your tunnel and then you just extrude triangulate whichever way you like and then work from work your tunnel from there I hope that helps if you've got any questions or if you want cheat sheets of anything specific like that if you want me to work out any particular tunnel dimensions um, drop a link in the comments and I'll try my best to, to sort that out for you thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one